ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Mac and T Show Podcast. Here are your hosts, Ryan McKay and T. David. This is the Mac and T Show. This is the Mac and T Show. We talk movies and TV shows. Sports and world news. Coasting like on a world cruise. Hosted by Brian McKay and T Davis. Yeah. You can't tame us. We're going to the top. We're becoming famous. What time is it? It's time for the Mac and T Show. What time is it? I said it's time for the Mac and T Show. Welcome back to the Mac and T-Show podcast. Uh, finally, as we have long awaited, the NBA playoffs have made it to the second round. Uh, with the last uh, last of the first round being finished up yesterday. And, you know, I won't speak too much on it. Just you know, LeBron doing LeBron things and having his usual game sevens with his nice little stat line and you know, telling everybody in the media afterwards that, you know, that kind of game is what the doctor called for. And, you know, How to sell the seats. Yeah. You keep playing with these people and going to game seven and see what happens. And, 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 and normally, normally I would uh, chastise him because, you know, he's making it sound like that's what, you know, the doctor called for him to play a game like that. But I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and let him... Let, let, let him, you know, maybe be saying that people like Kevin Love, who finally showed up in a big way yesterday, and and Tristan Thompson and Tristan, yeah, yeah, they, they <coughs> his supporting cast finally showed up, and hopefully, if they can continue that, you know, they can make a little run. But mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, as far <laughs> as uh, the second round, there's only two series so far getting kicked off, both in the Western Conference. James Harden uh, looking very video game esque against the Utah Jazz uh, with his big. They're gonna sweep them. Go ahead. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think you know. I think they you know they will be closer. The games will be closer as we go further down. But Utah just for whatever reason, and if you go back into the season and look at this stuff, James Harden has just been lights out against them and. If he's on like he was uh, in game one, they're going to be hard to beat. Uh, in the other series in the West, Golden State um, pretty much uh, shot down any chance of New Orleans coming in there and stealing game one. Yeah, and, seven seats. Yes. Okay. Ke- <laughs> Kevin Durant played like Kevin Durant should always play, in my opinion. Uh, just looking like a monster. When he plays that aggressive, it opens up the seat, you know. It op- opens up the seat for the Clay Thompsons to have the game he had, uh, and you know Draymond Green. And when Steph comes back, and they're saying in Game Two, which would be I would easy. send him out as long as possible. If we win game, I'll I'll wait like the Philly did. And I know you don't want to be one one, but I'll wait and see if we can get up two zero, and then I'll leave him out Game Three too. Yeah, because I mean, Anthony Davis had a you know a subpar game for him stat wise, but still was a very nice game for most people. Uh, even game one, and even if he has a little bit elevated from that, you still could you know outscore. That's not twenty two, right? <laughs> Drew Holiday, who has been playing magnificent in the playoffs to date, uh, he looked very pedestrian in game one. Uh, who they have on him, Thompson? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it don't look like that. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where they go. Rondo has no score, so it don't really matter if who they put on him. All right. I'm telling you, the series I'm looking forward to, it just because it has an old school feel to it, the Celtics and the 76ers. I oh, no, that's going to be, that's not going to be as good as you think. I, I, the Celtics I, have no answer for MB or uh, Simmons. None whatsoever. I'm just going off of nostalgia, not not necessarily what I think, you know. And I and I and I spoke I spoke that into existence wrong. I, I 
I, I, I meant just basically off of nostalgia with, you know, a throwback to the 80s and the 70s and 80s with the Celtics and the 76ers. Uh, just finally, this is the first time they've matched up in the playoffs since those days, you know, so. Okay. Yeah, but so yeah, I, I agree with you. Be or Cause I'm yeah. still rolling with the Seventy Sixers to be my pick out the East. And I can say I think they're gonna be Cleveland. If Cleveland make it, the way they're going. Yeah. So, um, I didn't want to spend too much time on that because we're not that deep into the second round. But uh, sticking with you know a little bit of NBA talk, uh, the commission on college basketball came out with their reports mm-hmm. on. Uh, you know, against, you know, with all the corruption going on and, you know, the commission is being led by former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. Uh, They come out and one of the main uh, things they came out with with their report is uh, kind of a, they didn't word it this way, but the way, you know, it's perceived is basically they would call for the elimination of the one and done rule. Thank you. And uh, we all call for that. You know, obviously that has to go through the players' union and all that good stuff, and that won't even. I don't be. know why the players' union ain't been said something about that. Well, I think that that's. Is a I think that's why it's pretty much expected it's going to happen because the players' union they they feel will be all for it. Um, you know, the G League being you know what it has grown to be, there's going to be yeah, 20... they're supposed to be able to make what thirty five thousand dollars next year, right? And there will be twenty seven teams coming in the next season. With Portland, Denver, and New Orleans being the only three that don't have a team affiliated yet, but are coming probably within the next year. Um, and I know for a fact New Orleans is looking for a spot because they were here on the coast uh, looking at one of the cities down here. But yeah, so I know they're at least looking. So those three will be, they had their own little affiliate, a G League affiliate sometime in the near future. So, okay. You know, I feel like the, 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 the guys that's been running the NBA, they've been smart. Um, why haven't they been had this form thing? I don't know. I don't know. Like, we already seen baseball do it, so it ain't like it's not a, a somebody that's already showed you the way. Yeah. This one and done has been an issue for a while. It just seems like with the money, like if you can pay these star, stars forty million a year, like if you if they took a little bit of a pay cut, the G League players could even make more than that. Right. If you make forty million a year, bro, I didn't 35 realize million, twenty million. And this is just my ignorance, but I didn't realize that the one and done rule as it's been you know when it when it took effect it's been since 2005 i had not realized that i mean it's been 13 years lebron just missed yeah seven players were drafted out of high school in 2005 the last year yeah. and then, and three of them are still in the league I'm about to say, who was the last who was the last we got Lou Williams still in the league amir johnson and gerald green Hmm. I don't but know. I don't understand it. I just like I still look. This is me being me. Mm-hmm. Just like I still don't understand why we haven't raised the goal. Yeah, you've been an advocate for that for a very long time. Ever since Dwight Howard came out there with the Superman suit and tapped the and glass, and touch the top of the <laughs> bad boy. Put the put the sticker up on the top of. The, yeah. Uh, even before that, I believe, I believe you were champion. Yeah, that yeah, because, foot. I mean, look how athletic they are. They get bigger, Brian, and mm-hmm. the goal is not changing. I'm trying to figure out how it's going to work get out. No I'm, trying, I'm just trying to see how it's going to work out with the G League, because I know the G League, right now, they can, you know, reach down like a farm league and, and <laughs> grab up and pick people up from the G League uh, as far as the NBA teams is concerned. How is it going to work with the the guy from Syrac that they decommitted from Syracuse and is just going to enter the G League. There is uh Basley Basley. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know I, I, how is that going to work? Cause he'll get drafted by whoever and they'll send him down to the league or keep him up in the big boy. Yeah, but without the the one and done rule being 
completely a wash, which they're not expecting that to be completely confirmed until 2020. Well, see, you don't... Well, okay, let me retract. So he wouldn't have to be drafted because he can go to any team he wants to win and just um, go to that trial to make... He's going to make a team, right? So right. he can go to whatever trial he wants and he just have to play the whole year and won't be able to be, be called up. Yeah, that's going to be good. But yeah, I did, I, I'm glad you said the, the salary. I, did, I didn't... See the what the salaries was. Yeah, they said they they moving it up. I think to like thirty five thousand. I was like, that's a good salary for most kids, especially you know, you're fresh. I'm an eighteen year old, nineteen year old. Your first job making that that's a good amount of money. Yeah, I mean that's if you wise with it, right? I'm not running out here thinking you making thirty five million <laughs> instead of thirty five thousand. Right. Be good. Well, uh, moving on to. Another professional league. Who uh, needs to do the same thing, but I'm sorry, go ahead. The NFL had their draft over the weekend and that uh, later part of last week. Uh, by now, and this is for the listeners, if you don't know all the picks and everything, I know we've we've done in the past where we've kind of gone and gone through who had who, you know, who did what and who who picked who, and just kind of. I don't know. It's kind of monotonous at this point. If you haven't seen it, you obviously don't care enough about it. Right. <laughs> so if you have, you checked it out. So I'm just going to pick a few stories that I kind of picked out from the weekend. Uh, Baker Mayfield going on to Cleveland was a surprise to many. And it just kind of happened like the last day or so before the draft that the reports were coming out that he would be picked number one. I didn't believe it. I said I'm going to have to see it to believe it. And when it happened, I said, well, good for him. Uh, Why didn't you think he would go on? I just think they had been pounding into me and pounding into me. And they, <laughs> by they, I mean, you know, these experts. They've been pounding into me that it's going to be a Sam Donald or Josh Rosen, Josh Allen, who had his own little troubles coming into the draft, which is completely ignorant to me because there's, there's 12 and 13 year olds all over the place. On this is why I've been a proponent. What happened to Josh Allen? For anybody that doesn't know, he had some people pull up his old tweets from when he was back in middle school, high school. Y'all uh, stop tweeting. I don't tell y'all to get on social is, media. Go this ahead. is why I have said since the beginning they should have all social media like it was when Facebook first started, where it was just you could you had to have a college email address. You had to be in college to, you know, and above to, to have a profile. You should not, when high school, high school kids should not be able to get social media. That's just, that's in my opinion. I feel like it would be a lot better place <laughs> if, so, because you just, you know, there, there are some who are just not mature enough to handle it. And he obviously wasn't, you know, going back and, and that pit making such a big deal out of the things he said in his tweets, like he, he was quoting rap lyrics in one of his tweets, and they made a big deal because he he said the n word. And well, it should have made a big deal. He shouldn't have been quoting nothing like that. Just immature kids, and that's why I, I've always said that social media should be for a much more mature audience. Well, so on some level, Brian, and we talking about high schoolers now. They're still immature because they're adolescents. I get that. But if you think about me, you, your mama, my mama, yeah. and all that, they should be a little more mature than, especially when it comes to social media and know what happens when people, you know, dig up old posts and stuff. Like, they should have seen it. At least when you buy your junior, senior, you, sh- you should be, like, they find enough people to know when somebody make a bad post, it goes left. Well, well, they don't put it to, to that they, they, it's right. going to happen to them. So they never think anything going to happen to them. Exactly. And, and you, there are now enough like social uh, social media and, and media in general training going on in college athletics that where they should have come into their mind, okay, I'm getting ready to go in the NFL. Do I want to be embarrassed by stuff that I did in my past? Let me go and delete, delete, delete. You know? And really, part of that is your... Your family, like that's part of that. Like, we can't put it on Facebook. Your parents should be instilling in you from the jump. They know y'all who, who, and if they if they feel like you don't, just say it in, in general. Mm-hmm. Look, 
whatever you put out there, you can't take it back. Because as soon as somebody screenshot it, whatever, you can delete it. But once they grab it, it's a done deal. <laughs> so make wise decisions when you post this stuff. And if you don't post when you're angry, hungry, lonely, or tired, <laughs> halt. <laughs> yes. uh, some other some other major stories uh, from the weekend: Lamar Jackson, uh, former Heisman Trophy winner from Louisville, Baltimore Ravens traded up to pick him at the last pick in the first round. Uh, so he will be a Baltimore Raven, backing up Joe Flacco. Uh, yeah, I like that pick. Good, good yeah, good solid that's pick because Flacco is is seemingly. Heard a lot the last couple of years, so yeah, it's good, it's good insurance. It's on the down and uh, Shaquem Griffin, UCF linebacker. That was uh, cool. Yeah, that I did. That he was the one that got me coming back. You know, because I had stopped watching draft after like the ninth pick. <laughs> so, uh, oh, so he was the one that kept having me come and just flip it back just to see has he been picked yet. Because I wanted to see where he got picked and, you know, where his story continued. And in the fourth uh, fourth round, I believe, he was picked by the Seattle Seahawks, uh, reuniting him with his twin brother. So that's a, that's a nice little story. Uh, let's see. We had, oh, I loved uh, Ryan Shazier from the Pittsburgh Steelers coming out to uh, announce their pick. Uh, and for those that don't know him, he was the one last year in the Monday night football game who basically was paralyzed on the field and is gone through. Oh, that's the one. Okay, because I, I didn't watch Jeff at all, but I watched the highlight stuff. Mm-hmm. And I saw somebody helping him walk out there. And I was like, what is going on? Then I was like, well, maybe he just started walking again. Clearly he had, but yeah. I didn't know that's what happened. Yeah, that yeah, him and his wife came out there, which was a good moment. Another, well, his old lady. Okay. Yes. Another, I thought she was just a worker with the with the system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you thought he was? She, she was an escort. <laughs> yeah, I thought she was just. You know how they have people that work and and show for them, push your head on and yeah. oh, stand right here, and they look at the whatever light to tell them to send them on out there to shake the commission. I thought she was one of them people. Yeah. My bad. I, I don't know what. I can't remember exactly what round, what pick it was, but. I love this moment because it goes back to last year. I believe the draft was in Philadelphia last year, and uh, Dallas Cowboy Drew, P- former Dallas Cowboy Drew Pearson, came out and and you know basically trolled the Eagles fans with a bunch of you know crazy comments before he announced the Cowboys pick this year. Uh, with it being in Dallas, former Eagles kicker David Akers came out and before he announced. The Eagles pick, he, he let these comments fly. He said, hey, Dallas, the last time you were in the Super Bowl, these draft picks weren't even born. Tell him to sit down. Yeah, man, y'all don't want to a Super Bowl and acting up. I love Boy. it. I love, you know, I love the, I love the pettiness. <laughs> um, and the last little story I want, just from the draft I wanted to show was Bill Belichick uh, breaking the a, a, I guess it was almost a decade-long record of uh, most draft uh, most draft trades within a draft. He had eight trades this year, <laughs> oh, yeah. and you know a bunch of draft picks, obviously, and they're set up really good for 2019 until he trades all those picks away. But right now, <laughs> next year, next year's draft, they're gonna be featured pr- uh, prominently. <laughs> So, and I'm just go back to this real fast. Well, I think one reason that the Browns took Mayfield is because, like, they, he he gonna bring hype. He gonna bring interest. People gonna want to see how well he does. And he's not like an awful quarterback. No, he's um, not. No, he's very good. He got a lot of swagger. Um, probably too much from some of his antics in college. So he got some growing up to do, but. The other guys, I don't think they had it. Like, I don't, I mean, I know a lot of them were on the West Coast, so we never would have saw them. But, yeah, they needed, they needed more than just being a good football player. Yeah. Because like, don't nobody really watch no Browns except the dog kind of people up there. I think the only other one in the draft really is somewhat close to being comparable to him is your boy Rosen. 
and that's only because he's just you know just very sure of himself and he and, and, and the way he presents himself in the media. I mean, and, and he even said, you know, as as he was, he dropped 10 when the Cardinals drafted up to pick him. He even said that, you know, he, nine other teams made a mistake, you know, made that kind of comment. Uh, so, yeah, and, and Sam Darnold is just that blue collar, prototypical, what everybody wants, you know, nice, good looking white guy, you know, tall. That's, that's what everybody wants to be their quarterback in the NFL. You know, all those GMs and owners and stuff. So he just kind of the carbon copy of what they want. Uh, kind of a boring. And then Lamar Jackson, he's the exact opposite. He's what everybody wants to be in another position. So, yeah. Mayfield, very good quarterback. I think he's going to do well there. They have a lot of different pieces coming in to next year on the offensive side with Jarvis Landry and. You know, Josh Gordon will be back, you know, barn. He don't have any outfield incidents this year. And, you know, another questionable, and it could it could work out in their favor, and they could be looking like geniuses. But I was shocked that the Browns took your boy from Florida, Antonio Callaway, who really hasn't, realistically hadn't really played since 2015. Like he, he didn't look like he was that good to me. I know it was a fourth round, but I mean, he played what he caught that that catch at Tennessee, and then he got hurt and didn't play no more. Almost <laughs> didn't. Yeah, well, he was hurt. Then he got himself into a bunch of like just kept getting himself in different little issues off the field. Um, yeah, I mean, if it works out for him, everybody you know at the draft was. Going on about how he had first round talent and, and well, he didn't. I ain't gonna say it was on him either because yeah. apparently them coaches weren't good. Because I continue to hear when I go on um the uh, Gator Nation twenty four seven Gator whatever all that SEC and stuff. Mm -hmm. They continually talk about how much different the atmosphere, how different like, and you can even see. The guys from the spring game, you can even see, like, even the the weight room guy. He got them getting bigger. Some of the guys posted, like, pictures of themselves with their shirts off. And he ain't had them but a couple of months. Oh, wow. So some of it was probably the staff. Yeah. Um, so maybe he got a chance. Well, college athletics, got to love it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Speaking of college football, uh, look like our uh, our just disdain and upset as we were with the end of EA Sports and NCAA football series may be coming to an end here in 2020. Uh, well, mine ain't because I still I, I don't even have no video game anymore, but. I ain't got time to be going through no roster and trying to to put the names in. <laughs> I ain't got time for that, bro. Yeah, I mean, you you really just in your mind you have to to let that go to fully enjoy what's about to happen. But uh, Immaculate Vision Gaming (IMV) is in the process of producing a college football themed game called uh, titled Gridiron Champions. Mm -hmm. uh, no. NCAA licenses, but mm -hmm. oh gosh, I didn't read this part of the story until just now. <laughs> but well, it's ten feature, one hundred and twenty six fictional schools. Wait a minute, wait a minute now. I might be taking my my comments back. I didn't read this sentence. <laughs> it's feature a hundred. I thought it was just gonna do all the schools and just not have the names or the likenesses. Oh, of no. the players. Mm -hmm. No, no. 126 fictional schools. Yeah. Oh, temper expectations, people. Excuse me. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I ain't got time to go make me an SEC conference and all that. Like, and they probably gonna have a school set up. I, I mean, if, if, that, if it were me, I would have it set up where there were regions. Like, there'll be a pack in the South. Right. There'll be a pack in and so then it wouldn't be so hard if you just was 
that person that will sit around because somebody's going to either make some kind of way for you to upload something so you don't have to do it. Oh yeah, the way the internet com- the way the, the the internet gaming community is now, if you just wait a week or so after the stuff comes out, there will be some kid that has nothing to do but sit around and play video games that will have have completely generated the entire NCAA football roster and yeah. and, and just so, download it and, and keep it moving. And that's that, what's gonna happen. Yeah. I could I was like, oh that's somebody gonna just go ahead and put the rosters in some kind of code or something so you can upload it. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I promise you I, I read that article two or three times and just must have skimmed right over that uh that it's scene it's it's it. when I saw that just now I hit my face. When I saw that brand, I don't know, I was like one hundred and twenty six. I ain't got time to be trying to make all these things. It's too much. Fictional. Man, y'all, y'all could at least get the darn team names. I'm sorry. How many algorithms they don't have to make sure all, like, it ain't a couple of players that's just alike? <laughs> I mean, good night. <laughs> when you talking about you got a, about 100, about 100 guys on a team, that's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Ooh, goodness. Well, so... Moving on from that, uh, that's pretty much all I had on my list. Do you have anything? You, I know we're going to get into Infinity War, hopefully next week, if we both be able to see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, so. do I have anything? No, anything that I have will be vexed, and I don't want to vex people's spirit on Monday. Um, anything good happen? Hmm. I don't know. Any good news out there? That we know about. I tried to come up with some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did? My bad. Uh, no, no. <laughs> it's, a, it's almost school, almost over. Well, college in a way. Because mm-hmm. I think, I feel like Ole Miss should be this day last that week of finals. If it's not, it's next week. Yeah, it's always first, second week of May, something yeah. like that. So people should be getting out of school. Um, no, yeah. uh, that's about it. I ran nuclear deal. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just felt like I ran, ran nuclear deals and all that foolishness. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I didn't really watch a lot. I didn't. Y'all, like, y'all know, everybody know T still don't have like no 32 inch TV. Like, I don't even have no smart TV. I guess that's what y'all call it. <laughs> And I saw a visual at Walmart, and I was like, "I was like, oh, it's ten on the, it's ten eighty pixels." So I was like, "That's a that's a good price." And guess what I did? Walked right out. Yeah, I kept walking. I was like, "Uh, I don't really want that much TV." And then I just kept going. So every time I tell my sister, they be like, "You ought to be." I was like, "I know it ain't a matter of me not being able to afford it. It's just that I don't know why." But I told them I'm gonna get me one this weekend. We're gonna go shopping and get one and then I'll just hook my little laptop to it when I watch movies. Cause it's a shame. I still got a TV with a um tool on the back. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> it's the one you gave me. I know, look, I, I know, I know the TV, yes. I know the exact <laughs> TV you working with. <laughs> the TV D V D player. <laughs> Oh, you know, I'm just glad to see that thing still working. It still works. My little remote still works. Uh, my little DVD player, everything still good. Well, that's all I use it for. I mean, I really can't hook nothing up to it anyway. Oh, well, okay. I do have another something just came to me. Empire fans, I know I mentioned that Alfred Woodard would be playing uh, Cookie's mom. Cookie mom. <laughs> she uh, made an appearance in a flashback this past episode uh, from Cookie's prison days. So... We we should be getting her soon in the flesh, uh, in real time. So I was talking about still talking about doing cookie store. You remember that was a thing uh, a couple of years back. You know I've been away from Empire for yeah, a while. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know. I hadn't heard anything else about it. Oh okay. But there's four more episodes uh, counting this week, uh, through for this season. So it's be interesting to see so, where it's, it's getting. It's getting to the nitty gritty. It's getting good. The storylines are. 
all uh, coming I'm together. Say, you can cut this or not, but I need to know what happened in the last episode because the, the, the internet tripping, and if you don't have like a t- cable code, they'll be like, oh, put your cable code in. I ain't got time. <laughs> so what happened when Cookie, I know Cookie had the heart attack. I did see that. Mm-hmm. Um, she, last episode she spent, you know, I, she had seen her, her pound cake from her prison days who has cancer. That's a great name. Yeah, pound cake. And um, child, 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 what do you think her regular name, her real name is on the show? Not, not, not pound cake. It ain't pound cake. No, no. What you think her name is? Cause she had, cause Cookie had to say her real name when she went to the hospital thinking that, you know, that's how they knew her. Her real Octavius. name on the show. Octavia. No, no, ma'am. <laughs> her real name is Sarah Lee Williams. That's why they call her Pound Cake. Sarah I Lee. I can't. I'm so done right now. I am so done and finished. Do you hear me? Look, when Cookie said that to the nurse, I'm I, to Sarah Lee I, had to pause, I had to pause TV. <laughs> <laughs> Pound cake, oh. aka pound cake. Are you joking? Like mm-hmm. I would say somebody was playing it, like being funny. Go yeah. ahead, whatever. So yeah, the, he, she's she's dying basically of cancer. Oh, no. She's in hospice. She's still in prison because you know she got out of prison in the flashback by basically turning in Cookie and them who were who were planning on getting at, getting back at the guard who had raped her and got her pregnant. Mm-hmm. Um. The pound cake that is. So she turned them in, and because of that, she was released. But obviously, you know, as you see in Orange is the New Black, for people who watch that, they, uh, you know, seem like the system always get them, and she was back in it. Uh, Not too much after that. So she's been back in it, and and, and now she's dying of cancer. And Cookie was the visitor. They kind of reconciled their relationship, and. She asked Cookie if she would kind of track down her daughter for her because she she not you know her daughter got taken away by right. the guard uh, after she had it the guard who impregnated her and mm-hmm. put into the foster system so Cookie tracks her down and you know this girl was raised by white parents and she is a dancer uh, kind of a ballet type thing. And oh, so she's tripping? What's happening? No, no, she's like a, yeah, she's like okay. a, a professional dancer, I think, at NYU. I think okay. She, yeah, so she is there, and, and she initially didn't know how to uh, approach her, but basically when she did, the girl knew her as Cookie Lion from Empire, obviously, and and told her, you know, basically Cookie used that to her advantage and got her to come in, made her think she was getting an audition for, to be one of Tiana's backup dancers. Mm -hmm. And when she got there, Tiana is on a power trip right now because she's got the number one single and she's too hot to try it and people. And she engaged the whole girl, right? But they uh, no, bro- they broke off right now. They, they broke off. off. Okay. Now, they they kind of on again, off again, but they broke off right now because she's just in another world right now because Forrest Whitaker's character is trying to manipulate her into you know she helping him kind of take over the empire or whatever. So mm-hmm. and she, you know she got the number one single, so she's all out there and you know big big headed and so she turned like she, she basically talks about the girl, trashes her. And the girl comes up to her like she's the biggest fan ever. But when the girl gets trashed, she kind of looks at Cookie. And Cookie then admits the real reason why she brought her there. And, you know, I want you to come see your mama, this, that, and the other. And Mm -hmm. the girl basically turns her down and says, no, you know, I'm not. She calls her like a drug dealer. And, 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 you know, because she's never met her, don't know anything about her other than what people have told her. So she basically turns her down and. Cookie has to tell Pound Cake that it doesn't look like it's going to happen. You mean Sarah Lee? Yeah, Sarah Lee. <laughs> and, you know, obviously, she's going to continue to try and get her. That's that's basically where it's left off with them. Uh, Andre has admitted to Lucius that he was the one behind the bombing that messed up his leg and almost killed right. him and Cookie. And he almost got right. choked up. <laughs> so yeah, Lucius has come after him. They they're kind of in the middle of kind of fixing their relationship while also taking down Eddie, uh, Forrest Whitaker's character. Uh, you know, what happened with him and the, uh, the white guy that he was trying to manipulate to get the to tell him he could get 
he could sell him Empire. That's still in the works. Still in the okay. works because this guy is planning on buying it, but he, they have it broke off in four different uh, buyers, and it's all under his Eddie Barker's, Forrest Whitaker's, all yeah, under his, his ex wives. The Thanks. oldest son, yeah, was trying to tell his daddy, and I was like, "No, Lucius, you tripping? Cause you mad at him? You gonna mess up in this company? Gonna be gone?" So okay. now Lucius and Andre have found that out. They've gone to all the ex wives, and all the ex wives come and they're trying to turn on Eddie. But it may be almost too late because it looks like their uh, their plan is has worked, and this guy's fixing to, to buy his biggest stake in the company, and he's gonna be the owner. So that's where this week leads into. That you know, okay. we go see what happens. Uh, and Shine and Lucius look like they may be working together. But also at the end of the last episode, where they kind of show you the lead into the next one, it looks mm-hmm. like at the end of this one, we're gonna wind up with Shine and Lucius pointing guns at each other, which hey. shocker! Yeah, saw that coming. Saw that coming back when they. Well, uh, uh, you saw that coming back when they introduced uh, Exhibit's character in the first place. So that—that's a given. But yeah, so it's getting—it's getting hot. It's getting—it's getting good. Jamal and um uh, and Tori Ash, who's played by uh Demi Moore's daughter, um, uh, is uh, uh Rumor Willis. Uh, they uh forming their little group, and they're already having friction because uh. Tori is back on the, the drugs and oh, good. so it's uh yeah and Jamal is is, is he's drinking again man. Jamal is not not Jamal no Jamal excuse me Hakeem is mentoring a white rapper oh, no. played by <laughs> when I found oh, this out I died oh, played by oh. uh Chet I think is his first name Hanks who is the son of Tom Hanks. And oh, no. He's kind of like the renegade son, because he's not like any other member of their family. <laughs> he's he's uh, tattooed and, you know, just real rugged looking. And uh, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes, because Hakeem was real reluctant to do it at first, but the guy kind of won him over. So it's, yeah, it's going to be interesting dynamic with all those storylines being interwoven. Oh, and Anika's back. Anika, Eddie, Eddie and uh, Phil Forrest Whitaker's character and Anika are, have met, and Anika's looking like she's going to help him with his takeover. Anika ain't learning yet, has she? Uh, Anika, listen. <laughs> she out, she there look, out there looking like a uh, Jasmine guy in uh, Harlem Nights. What a <laughs> wait till you see it. You'll see what I. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see oh, the hair. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's where Empire's gone. So, yeah, it's gonna get interesting. Everybody get caught up. Four episodes left in this in this season. Hope you got a a, a cable code to put in. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but that's all I got. Yeah, that's that's good. I ain't really watching. Well, I I had watched a couple of them, like I said. That then the computer started talking about. I had so many minutes left before I was gonna have to put a cable code in. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, I missed the the other ones. So yeah, it's about to be that time for power be out this summer, right? And then in June. Um. Uh, I don't really watch Greenleaf and them like that, but I'll let them be. Either they're happening now and I'm missing it, or it should be out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's going to roll it up for us. It has. All right. in. Yes. Sir. It's so hard to say goodbye yesterday. As always, I am one of your co-hosts. And I'll take with me the memories. Brian McKay. <laughs> <laughs> and I am with... T guy is good, Davis. And this has been the Mac and T Show podcast. Thank you for listening. This is the Mac and T Show. This is the Mac and T Show. We talk movies and TV shows, sports and world news, coasting like on a world cruise. Hosted by Brian Nikkei and T Davis. Yeah.
can't tame us We going to the top, we're becoming famous What time is it? It's time for the Mac and Tea Show What time is it? I said it's time for the Mac and Tea Show